All right, hi everyone. Um, so I'd actually like to start with a thought exercise. Um, what is the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word nuclear? Um, take that thought and put it in your pocket. We'll revisit it later. But whatever your answer may be, it's probably different, maybe even at odds with the person next to you. Um, as for me though, uh, nuclear has been an ever-present force in my professional life, um, but as I strive to be this uh, well-rounded nuclear policy nerd, I also proudly identify as a writer and a creative. And as you can imagine, those two things don't mix so well. Um, on the one hand, I have this topic that is horrifyingly boring to my family and my friends, and on the other, I have this constant urge through writing and the arts to connect with everyone around me. But I've eventually come to realize that nuclear uh, can actually embody both. Think about it, right? Um, even though we're not all physicists, uh, engineers, or policy experts, uh, there's something about this word that touches our core. Even though we don't understand the political or technical intricacies, uh, we get pulled in when we hear the prospect of a certain psychopath pushing the red button, right? And so, <laughs> so why is that? How come nuclear, a concept that is so abstract and distant from our daily lives, elicit emotion out of us? So I believe that nuclear images uh, serve as foundation for the nuclear narratives that we create and choose to believe. Um, and these, in turn, uh, shape our values and dictate our actions. So um, the first thing that comes to mind when you hear the word nuclear is usually this. So this is the um, Castle Bravo nuclear test uh, conducted in 1954. It's the first fully packaged hydrogen bomb that the United States tested with an explosive power a thousand times of the, uh, than the Hiroshima bomb. And the scientists actually miscalculated the movement of the radioactive fallout. So it fell on a Marshall Island residents and a Japanese fishing crew out to sea. Um, so the United States hasn't uh, tested since 92, but there's definitely uh, nuclear wannabes out there like North Korea that continue to test today in 2016, and the international community has yet to enforce the Comprehensive Test Ban Treaty. The U.S. has signed it, but has yet to ratify. Um, but let's be real, right? Um, the image of the mushroom cloud is oversold and overconsumed. Uh, even though it's become this effective, iconic image of fear and destruction, we've also managed to plaster it in almost every action movie. This is actually wallpaper that you could put on your desktop. I don't know who would put it on their laptop, but if it floats your boat, fine. But, you know, here it is. It's the stuff of science fiction. So let me ask, how does the image of the mushroom cloud, for better or for worse, shape our nuclear narrative? Um, here's another common image um, that comes from Walt Disney, out of all people, in his 1956 uh, storybook and animated film, Our Friend the Atom, um, that the volatile power of nuclear weapons can actually be controlled, like a genie in a lamp, uh, granting our wish for a better and brighter future in the form of nuclear energy and nuclear medicine. It was his way of reframing nuclear from this horrific invention to a wonderful scientific discovery. Um, while he rightfully recognized um, uh, the, the benefits of nuclear technology, his utopic vision was eventually tempered by the accidents that has happened, like Fukushima, Chernobyl, and Three Mile Island. So let me ask again, how does the image of nuclear power, for better or for worse, shape our nuclear narrative? So I started this thing, it's a digital platform called Bomb Shelto, um, to chronicle unfamiliar or forgotten uh, nuclear images around the world in the hopes that people would better engage with nuclear issues. I'd like to move beyond the narrative of fear or naive hope because I think that those alone um, do not inspire constructive change. 
uh, fear leads to paralysis, while naive hope could bring uh, crushing disappointment. So that thought in your pocket, um, does it consist of mushroom clouds or the friendly atom? How can we synthesize those concepts together? How about this? These are photographs taken by a Japanese artist, Takashi Homa. These are abandoned mushrooms in the Fukushima forest, dusted with radioactive material. They are forbidden to be harvested and eaten, and yet they grow like tiny survivors, defiantly flourishing despite their circumstances. To me, these images wrestle with beauty and tragedy and resilience, and it draws me in a personal level um, and has sh shaped and framed what nuclear means to me. That its destructive force is palpable, but it can be countered with growth and life. So nuclear issues um, are deeply personal issues, uh, not just because we discovered um, the atom, but because we need to be responsible custodians of it to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons, to seriously engage nuclear disarmament, to insist on the safety and security of all nuclear facilities and material. But in order to even get to that point, to embrace this sense of responsibility, we have to first spark curiosity, be interested, and invested. We have to be better stewards of the atom because we're all literally made from it. So I, I really encourage you all to seek and create uh, alternative nuclear images and narratives. Um, from the love story of uh, Pierre and Marie Curie, the discoverers of radium, to the uh, civil rights movement and how they've linked uh, equality to nuclear disarmament. And even the artwork of Subot Gupta, who literally used pots and pans to sculpt his own uh, mushroom cloud to humanize and contextualize the very real nuclear tension between India and Pakistan. And of course, you have Takashi's Homa's mushrooms. I hope that Bomb Shelter will help bring these um, you know, images to light and um, help everyone kind of look at nuclear issues through, the, through, through a different prism. And I really hope that you all, too, um, reshape nuclear narratives through your own creative work, as crazy and outlandish as it may seem. But maybe by doing so, we could all make nuclear issues more grounded and connected to us. Thank you.